give praise to God right now. I would like you to do me a favor. Would you lift both hands to the Lord in a way of surrender? Let's make a B so he can pour it in. Make a B so he can pour it in. Pour it in me, Lord. Oh. 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 <laughs> Now, would you put your hands together with a shout right now in a voice? Uh, there's an, a powerful anointing in this place as there's been in this place in a long, long time. It is highly anointed in this place. And when we have something like this, anything can happen. I am asking you to turn your faith loose. Anything can happen. God's at work. If you don't mind, I'm not gonna preach long, but I still feel like I have a word. Is that okay? I wanna say, before y'all go down, I want to say a special thank you to our music. They get here early and I just give honor to them. You know, it's got to move up here because we got Jesus and Simon Peter on the platform. So it's got to be good. Thank y'all very much. Let's remember Pastor Gentry is, well, he's done by now because they're an hour ahead of us or he better be, at least be letting his wheel down by now. Uh, that message last Sunday was a landmark message. I am glad that the media got a hold of it. If you have not heard about it, you can go to the Hayride. They wrote a big article about Pastor Gentry's message and quoted him for half of the article. And I thank God for that. They talked about pulpits that had gone silent. And they was glad to know there was a pulpit in Alexandria, Louisiana that would still lift their voice. <laughs> Pastor Andrew, your message Wednesday night, including the Word of God, another great, we're blessed around here. I'm going to preach. God's going to do something great. Mickey can tell you, I didn't sleep last night. I mean, I didn't sleep at all. I've been flipping and turning it, and it's nothing but the anointing. I'm anointed, and I'm mad at the devil. I don't know how those two, I don't know how those two get along, but we're getting ready to find out. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now, unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can Ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He's not just able to do it abundantly. It's exceedingly abundantly. Daniel 3, 17 through 18. Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. And here's my message of years to go. But if not, devil, if you never heal me, if I never, if I live poor the rest of my life, you ain't getting my hands down, you ain't shutting my voice up, I gotta praise to God. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that thou will not serve thy gods. We ain't bound to your gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Our God, whom we serve, is able. And this morning, I'm gonna preach on he's able. Would you put your Bibles down and with a shout and a hand clap, would you give that to God just as loud as you can give it? You may be seated. 
Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I can't preach. Gentry does a good job, and Andrew does a good job, and Ryan does a good job, but I can't preach unless people talk back to me. So if you've gotten used just to sitting here great preaching and taking your notes, I want you to take notes, and if I say anything worth taking a note on, and I want you to go through the Bible with me, but I want you to lift your voice today. I do better when I hear that. And you do good when I get started, but preach with me all the way through here today, amen? I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bible said, he that heareth and obeyeth are blessed. And I'm blessed today because half of the world's never heard it. The book is not a fairy tale book. Now, before you amen that, I'm going to tell you some stories out of it today, and I want to make sure that that's what you believe. This is not some book that is written, a scheme to sell some product. It is the enduring, eternal Word of God that declares that the grass withereth away and the flower fadeth, but the Word of God shall stand forever. This book, all of it, every one of it, and sometimes I even say the maps, this book is the inspired, infallible Word of God. The Bible said, holy men of God, moved by the Holy Ghost, were able to reveal the will and the mind of God without foreknowledge or premeditation. The words of the sacred writers and speakers are God's words. This is God's word. What I would love to hear the voice of God, here it is. We would all love to hear an audible voice, but here it is. This is the word of God. Both the Old and the New Testaments are the product of simply the breath of God. The Bible said, Moses saith, and it happened. David saith, and it happened. Isaiah saith, and it happened. The prophets and the apostles, Peter, Paul, James, and John, said it, and it happened. The entire scripture saith, and is absolutely what God says. The center of which this book is the cross, and the circumference of which is his glory. He liveth and he abideth forever. Jesus Christ being the one dominating character of this whole book. Creator, mentor, redeemer, conqueror, the only savior, the unchangeable, immutable creator of the universe. It's him that on June the 25th, I declare unto you that no matter what you are facing or what you are going through, my God is able to take care of anything that you're facing. I've seen him save the unsavable. I've seen him do the impossible. I've seen our great God provide the unprovidable. He is an able God. Would you say that? He is an able God. He's exceedingly abundantly able above all that we can. He's able to do beyond anything you can. Or you believe that? Oh, wait, wait. Oh, he can do anything that you can think of. He goes beyond. You think of your biggest miracle or the biggest thing. He goes beyond all of that. He is exceedingly able to according to his power that worketh into us. Unto him be glory in the church of Jesus Christ through all the ages, the world without end. Amen and amen. It's him that I'm going to preach to you today. I wish I'd had time. I started to get a hold of Judy and have her send me all that he is from Genesis to Revelation, but I don't have time to do that today. But I'm just gonna tell you, he's the king, eternal, immortal, invisible. He is the only wise God, and I give him glory and honor forever and ever and ever. This is what he said. 
I am Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning, I'm the ending, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty God. He said in Revelation 1 and 11, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write it in a book. Send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamos and unto Thyatira and Sardis and Philadelphia and unto Laodicea and I would add, and to Alexandria, Louisiana. I am him that liveth and was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's able. He's able. I'm going to preach you out of your depression. I'm going to preach you out of your depression. I'm going to preach you out of your lack of fight. I'm going to preach you out of I prayed that it happened. I'm going to tell you today he's able to take care of anything that's in your situation. When the most brilliant minds, when the most skilled surgeons, when the most prolific thinkers, when the wealthiest philanthropists have all dropped out of the picture, he's still there and he's more than able. When that doctor, who was the doctor that even learned how to put heart in people? What was his name in Africa? I can't think of his name, but anyway. He's the, first one, he's the first one that did a heart transplant. Thank you. That's who he was. I still didn't hear the name. Got here in age and still can't hear. How you like that deal? Jesus Christ in his gospel, his death, burial, and resurrection, which is the fulfillment in your life when you repent of your sins and you're bearing the name of Jesus. You come up, God baptizes you with the Holy Ghost. That's the resurrection and that's the life and that's what I have today. It is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare him unto you. He that cometh to me. It's the Bible. He that cometh to me. I will in no wise cast out. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. I don't care what sin you've committed. I don't care what you have done. I don't care what you've said. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you participated in. I don't care how bad your past is. When you get the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your life, Everything is gone. Everything is gone. He's able. Now, he can either do it all or he can't do any of it. Oh, he can save us. If he can save us, he can heal us. If he can't heal us, he can't save us. I'm telling you. If he can save us, he can heal us. For I have come to declare he is the great physician. He is the healer of all manner of sickness and disease. I can and will be touched by the feeling of his infirmities. He said, come boldly to me. I am your help. He says, I am your healer in time of need. I can supply all of your need. That's not to me. That's not to us. That's to individuals. He can supply my need. He can supply your need. There is nothing in this room that God can't do this morning. I can't preach the Bible today, but there was one that really gets me. And that's when the Lord told Simon Peter, he owed taxes. He said, here's what you're going to do. I want you to go fishing. Well, how am I going to get money going fishing? He said, just go fishing. How you like that, Jerry? Watch this one. Go fishing. Him and Jerry. So Jerry and Simon Peter went fishing. Oh, except Jerry ain't never had this happen, I don't think. So Simon and Peter, however they fished back then, they jerked and he got one and pulled it up. And you know what was inside of that fish's mouth? Folks, do y'all really believe that? I'm going to try to convince you to be an atheist here right now. No, 
And then you're sitting there worried about a headache and you tell me you believe the Bible. He, he owes taxes. So God tell him to go fishing. He goes fishing. <laughs> oh my goodness. Reaches in there and there's his tax money. He's able. Then you're worried about your headache or you're worried about your job or you're worried about your finances. He's able. Jerry, let's go fishing this afternoon. It may happen. Like that old boy got up and he got up and said, we're going to pray that we're going to take all the beer and we're going to take all the tobacco and we're going to take all the drugs and we're going to go dump it in the river and we're going to let it just stay down that river and going to float down in the river. And the song leader gets up behind him and says, turn to page 262. Shall we gather at the river? He can take money out of the fish's mouth. He can handle any circumstance or situation you're in. He's able. And I'm going to have you saying he's able all week long. He's able. When the devil throws something at you, he's able. When your faith gets weary, he's able. When you're tired of saying it, say it again. He's able. King David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed out begging for blood. He said, I've never seen his seed begging for bread. I declare he's able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you're able to think or ask. Our God whom we serve is able. I was in Houston with Rick and Mick We were over there getting the results of everything that's going on in Rick's body. And mother told me, said, I'm headed to the hospital. Said, God just spoke to me. Mike Grant's in serious condition. His sister's here, who's just one few steps shy of being a medical doctor, whatever the one is right under it. I get them all confused. I can't keep up with titles all these days. It's just, she she knows medicine. And Mike was very sick and uh, infection through his body. And mother got a burden. And she said, I'm going up there. And she went up there and she fell beside his bed and laid his hand on Mike and started praying the prayer of faith and the healing power. And his boys started praying. Charlotte started praying. The power of God began to move in there. I went to see him yesterday and he's doing much better than he was and he's on the improvement. Mike, he's watching this morning. God is able. Tell me God can't do it. You're going to believe something. You believe this. Why do you believe this? I'm going to try to convince you to be an atheist. Do you really believe that people got out and ran a wall and marched seven times? Do you really believe something like that could happen? March it six times. Didn't even get a crack in the wall. I mean, if it had been me at least at four or five, he could at least show me a little crack. There was nothing that had happened. He just kept on marching. But at seventh time, the walls fell flat. Moses gets all these people, tell them to shut shut up a lamb. Seven to 10 days, it had to be perfect. They examined the lamb. That's why during Messiah, you saw them. Lot didn't catch it, but when the priest, they brought that lamb down the aisle, that priest examined it because it had to be perfect. That lamb couldn't have a spot on it. They'd shut it up for seven to 10 days. They had that lamb examined because it had to be the perfect lamb. They shut that thing up and that, that blood, then that blood, would you really believe that they put blood on the doorpost? And when the death angel came around, everything that didn't have the blood on it, the firstborn of that family died. You, do you really believe that that happened? Do you really believe that God spoke to Moses and said, get my people, two to three million of them, and tell them to follow you. You've got mountains on each side. We've got a Red Sea in front of us, but I'm going to provide a way. Do you really believe that Moses got two to three million people, got them all together, and they start living in Pharaoh's house. Pharaoh's army's chasing them, and they get to the Red Sea, and he doesn't know what to do. He's got mountains, he's got people behind him, and watch this. God says, we give up, but God says, stand still. 
There's sometimes in your walk of faith that you have to stand still. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And all of a sudden, buddy, he lifted that rod and that sea opened up. You've heard me preach before. It went to hither and to thither, wherever that is. And they walked across on dry land. Do you really believe that you could go to the Red River and, and we could hold the Bible up mid-split and the moment you walked in, there was no mud. It was just dirt. You really believe that? You mean you people tell me you're going to believe that this book is real? And you're going to tell me he can open a Red Sea, he can bring down walls, but he can't take care of your situation. He's able, he's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. <laughs> Diana's watching right now. I called her before church. Diana, we love you. Everybody t turn and hold your hand towards the camera and say, we love you, Diana. In Jesus' name, be healed. Folks, Mickey and I went up to her apartments up on the 15th floor right across from the hospital there in, in Houston, Texas. We went up to her apartment, and she doesn't have a heart now, a physical, fleshly heart. She has a machine inside of her that's about this size. It's placed in there. Charlotte would know more about it. It's in there. It's got two tubes coming out. And it's got a machine there that, that she came out of the bedroom. I got there and went to the recliner. And that machine, I'm sitting there looking at it. I said, what is that? She said, that's my heart. So I'm looking at the machine. I said, what's inside there? And she showed me the little plastic thing. She's got a plastic heart. And it's going, thank God for science. I thank God for that. I said, well, what if the electricity goes out? She said, we have a backup that will last two days. I said, what if the backup goes out? She said, we got two more batteries that can take care of that. She said, God's got it, Pastor. <laughs> Diana, he's able. You got a heart coming your way. She's waiting on a heart. You got a heart coming your way. He's able. I left there and told Mick, I said, I gotta go see Kenneth. His family's here today and I drive to Austin, Texas. He's the best man in my wedding. He lived across at nine, I lived at 10. Nobody liked Kenneth, Kenneth was my hero. Kenneth was everything. I mean, Kenneth, 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 Kenneth. I get to Kenneth and he's having some physical challenges right now. And I thank Karen and Kenneth for watching this morning. And I know, Kenneth, how you've preached the gift of faith and how God used you. And I don't care what a doctor may say, I'm believing and I'm standing by faith that God is going to heal your body and he can touch you. I'm declaring that in the name of Jesus. I know it's appointed unto man once to die, but I declare that. And boy, we had a time we prayed, talked in tongues, and Karen, all of us joined hands. We had an unbelievable prayer meeting and the power of God manifested itself. I thank God for what's going on. That little lady standing right here. Where's the lady that came down here and stood and we prayed with? Would you stand, please? Would you stand? The lady that was just here about your daughter. You told me about your daughter in February. Is she still here? Where, uh, up top. Where are you? Oh, in the balcony. There you are, ma'am. I want you to know this church is praying for you. She came down here and always asked, ma'am, what do you need healing for? She says, uh, really, it's, it's not my body. She said, my daughter took her life in February. Ma'am, I declare to you, he's able. I know you're grieving yourself to death. I know you have a lot of ifs in your life, but I'm telling you today, he's able. Through the authority and the power of the name of Jesus, I command help to come your way. And if you haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus, today is your day to go under the name of Jesus and get all your sins washed away. Let me tell you, people's got a lot on them. She don't know how she's going to recover, but let me tell her today, he's able, he's able, he's able, he's able, he's able. And Rick's here today. I'm not going to call him up front. And uh, this kind of stuff embarrasses him. But Mick and I got with Rick. We got there. We left Kenneth. Quite a tour. Diana and Dallas. Going to my friend who's very sick in Austin. And then leaving my friend very sick in Austin. Going to Houston. 
and we go to the center there. And Rick does his scans on um, Thursday. And Friday, we're to go get the reports. And when we're there, it's me and Rick and Mick in the room and Paul. Thank God for Paul Nordstrom. And we're in the room and, and in walks the doctor and he sits down on a stool. How are y'all? Good. Are you feeling good? Yes. Have you been sick? No. Have you been not? No. No. I'm doing good. This has gone down. Yeah. Good, good, good. He said, well, I don't have good news for you today, Rick. And I said, let me can't tell you. I'm, I'm the only one to respond in the room. I'm like, because I had such faith that we were going to hear it was totally gone. But instead, I'm going to read to you what Mickey sent to our family. Rick's report today sure could have been better. The melanoma has spread to several places in the tissues of his abdomen now as well as his brain. There are spots in his brain are more significant than others, and they're going to target that with radiation and treatments. We come to see the neurosurgeon and the radiologist and oncologist this Thursday, which is this common surgery. Rick, he takes everything well. He said, okay. You know why? Rick's got faith like I've never seen. I'm sitting there trying to give Rick this message on, Rick, don't have any fear now. God, what? You know, God, whatever, you know. Rick's got such faith. And I got the faith to believe, Rick, in the name of Jesus, buddy, this church loves you. And we declare it through the authority and the power of that holy, godly name, Jesus. In Jesus' name, he's able! You let me tell you something. If Rick dies tomorrow, next Sunday, I'll be here declaring he's able. You're not going to shake my faith. You're not going to shake my faith. I'm going to declare what God has done. He is able. You may be seated. You really need to become an atheist. You really do. Because there was a man one time that prayed to God three times a day. And they took him, and there were some hungry lions. And they threw him in that den of lions. And the lion wouldn't touch him. Y'all really believe that? You sure you believe something like that? You know I'm joking. He's able. Do you really believe that there were three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, Abed, Nego, how you like that, Brian? That he really delivered them from a fiery furnace that had been heated seven times hotter? They wouldn't bow. He said, hey, we just don't want it hot. Turn it up seven times hotter. Listen, they were bound in their coats, their hosen, their hats, their garments were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. But Nebuchadnezzar looked and he saw the fourth man. He said, he looks like the son of God. All four men are walking in the midst of the fire. And the entire king's court saw these men upon whose body the fire, no power, nor was a hair of their head singed. Neither were their coats changed nor was there the smell of fire on their clothing. Do you believe that? He is able. He's able. He's able to take care of your situation. He's able to heal your situation. He's able. He's able. He's able. Patsy. Patsy, Charlie used to sing this song. You remember when Charlie Carruth used to sing and the quartet was singing. Now the prophet Daniel tells about three men who walked with God. They were Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego before the wicked king they trod. And the king commanded them bound and thrown into the fiery furnace that day. But the fire was so hot that the men were slain that forced them on their way. They wouldn't be. They held on to the will of God so weird. To, they would not bow. They would not bow their knees to the idols made of gold. They would not burn. They were protected protected by the fourth man in the fire. They wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, and they wouldn't burn.
You like it? Here's some more of it. <laughs> now, when the three were cast in and the king rose up to witness that awful fate, he began to tremble at what he saw and astonished tones he spake. Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Lo, I see four men unhurt, unbound, and a walking down there. There's Shaddy, there's Meshach, there's Bandigo, and the fiery coals they trod. But the form of that fourth man that I see is like unto the Son of God. I don't care how hot your fire is today. I don't care how deep your den is today. My God is able to deliver you. He can heal you. There's no domestic situation. There's anything you can ask or think he can go over and beyond it. The psalmist said, I called upon the Lord in my distress and the Lord heard me and the Lord answered me and he set me in a high place. Would you raise your hand? Just call out to God. You can stay seated. I'm about done though. But just call, come on, lift your voice. Jesus! Okay. Now, you may be seated. Nicole, would you stand, please? Nicole had a terrible disease. They began to attack that disease. And when they did, they encountered liver failure. And this church began to pray. It became a very, very serious, unto death situation. But this church and her family and other churches begin to pray and fast. And Nicole told Mick and I the week before last or last month sometimes, time is moving so fast. I am totally healed and I am totally clean. <laughs> Marilyn, would you stand? I won't embarrass you. She doesn't like to do this. Thank you, you may be seated. She doesn't like to stand. Marilyn Bustard, don't we love the Bustards in this church? <laughs> Went to Houston, cancer, all kind of sickness, all kind of messed up things, sick as could be. Doctor concerned, Morton, all of us praying. Morton's got such a gift of faith. But he asked us all to pray. He said, I prayed for everybody else, but when it's your wife, it sure is tough. And we got to praying. I walked over to her before church. I said, I want to make sure that my story is correct. The last I heard, all that was in your body that was of sickness of cancer is gone. Is that correct? She said, it's gone. <laughs> Our God, whom we serve, shouted, he is able. Dustin and Savannah's here. Would y'all stand? I think they're in the balcony up there. There they are right there. Dustin's standing. There's Savannah. And they got their little baby with them. Understand, they've been in Houston for weeks. Okay, for weeks. Their baby was premature. Wasn't expected to live. But this church got to pray. And their family got to pray. And we got to interceding. And we got, is, is that that miracle in your arms? Huh? That's your miracle. Hold it high. Look up there, there's your miracle. Doctor didn't think that baby was gonna live. Look out there, he's able! Don't tell me my God can't do it. Don't tell me my Lord can't handle your circumstance. Don't tell me my God can't. My God can handle anything you've got. If you're in this room, you have a physical need, you have a spiritual need, or you have a financial need, would you stand to your feet? Oh, Lord, I didn't expect to see this. <laughs> Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of anything of anything that I've said or done. Forgive me of any sin I committed. Sins of omission. Sins of commission. Forgive me right now, Jesus. I believe your blood 
is going to heal my body. I repent before you. I lay my life before you. Forgive me of anything that I have done. Yeah. I want you to, if it's your family, or it's lady to lady, or man to man, I want you to reach over and lay your hand on that person that is standing beside you. If it's not your family, or male to male, or female, please don't do that. If it's a guest, you ask them if you can lay your hand on them. Outside of that, do not do that, please, okay? Through the authority that's been invested in me, and by the power of the name of Jesus, and because I have declared that you are able, and because we believe that you open red seas, and blind eyes open up, and deaf ears, and because we believe that Lazarus came out of a grave four days after he was dead, because we have chosen to believe the 66 books that happens to be your word. I declare in the name of Jesus that healing comes to everyone in this room right now. Now lift your voice and pray for that person right now. In Jesus' name. Lift your voice and declare it. Lift your voice and declare it. There is healing in the name of Jesus. He is able. Pray for your circumstance. Pray for your children. Pray for your family. In the name of Jesus, they shall be saved. In Jesus' name, they shall be saved. Let's all stand together. And now, with a voice and clap, let's all stand together like you have never done. Listen, whether you feel it or didn't feel it, we're going to praise him as if, well, some of it did. But we're going to pray that every one of us just got our prayers answered. If you feel like, if you knew, let me just say, wait just a minute, wait just a minute. If you knew for sure, we don't know that, but if you knew for sure that God just took care of what you just prayed for, would you raise your hands and praise him accordingly for that? He's able. He's able. Yeah. <laughs> Raise your hands and if you feel the Spirit speaking through you, speak. If you feel the Holy Ghost speaking through you, speak. Let there be a river flow out of your innermost being right now. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. <laughs> Let the river flow. Do one more crazy thing and then I'm done. I promise you I'm done. I should have put your hand right here on your stomach, not somebody else's now. And I want you to say, Holy Ghost, flow out of me right now. Lift your voice and let tongues begin to flow. Let the Spirit begin to flow. That's it. Come on, lift your voice. Let the Holy Ghost begin to touch it. I said, let it flow out of your innermost being. Let it clean out everything. Let the power of the Holy Ghost flow. If you're in this room and you've never, you've never received the Holy Ghost and never been baptized in Jesus' name, I want you to step out from where you're standing. Ministry team, come on down here with me. Ministers, those of you who feel anointed, come on down here. If you're in this room, you need healing for your body. You need something to happen in your life. You walk down to the front of this church right now. There you go, come on. 
I said, step out by faith. Those of you, you need to be baptized in Jesus. That's it, men, come on down here. Step out of here by faith. That's it, buddy, come on. God's got something for you. There you go, men, meet him right there. God's got something for you. Bring them on down. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name today. You're gonna be baptized in the name of the Lord today. Come on down this aisle. Bring that man down in Jesus' name. If you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, don't leave here until you're baptized in Jesus' name. Brother Brown. Some men lay hands on Brother Brown. He needs immediate healing. I love you, great church. Before you leave, would you shout at me, he's able. Would you clap your hands one more time with me, he's able. I love you, God bless you. He is able. What an encouraging word from the Lord, a divine word, an anointed word from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. I know that is going to happen in your life today. The will of the Lord in an exceeding abundance is going to be revealed through life in you today. Whatever miracle you need, whatever situation you need clarity in, God is going to be exceeding abundantly above all of those offerings. We believe it. We speak it in Jesus' name. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We look forward to seeing you Wednesday night again in worship. Until then, go and know He is able.